Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do multi mic recording or multi channel recording in Reaper. Now, one of the biggest complaints I hear about using takes in Reaper is when it applies to multi channel recording. Let me show you the problem. Let's say you're recording live drums. I have a bunch of tracks right here. We have a kick, snare, snare bottom, a couple of toms, a pair of overheads, and a pair of rooms. So I want to record some drums. Now let's say I want to do another take. We can record right on top of it. And now we have two takes of drums. Here's the first one, here's the second one. But the problem with this is that there's no way to link them. If I choose take one on my kick, I'm still hearing take two on my snare. So to switch takes, we have to switch them on each one, like this. So it's very easy to make a mistake and choose a wrong take for one of the mics. So I'm going to show you a better way of doing it. Let's undo that recording. And instead, Let's make a new track. We'll put it on the top and we'll name it Drums. So now we're going to record all our drums to this one track. Because in Reaper, we can do that. Let's go to our preferences and look at our mic inputs. Go to Audio and go right down here. Here's where the mics are plugged in. I didn't use input one or two. So I started on mic three with a kick, a snare, toms, a pair of overheads, and a pair of rooms. And the last mic is a snare bottom. I put it separate to make it easier to deal with stereo pairs. This way the overheads are seven and eight and the rooms are nine and 10. This way it's not an odd pair. So now we'll go to our drum track over here, go to routing, and set our track channels to 10 tracks, right here. Now we're only recording nine inputs, but in Reaper, we have to do this in pairs. So we'll record 10 and just ignore the last one. Set up our inputs right here, choose 10 channel, and then go down here. This is gonna be input one through 10, this would be two through 11, and this is three through 12 which is where our mics were plugged in. Right over here, three through 12. Remember, we're not using the 12th one, but we're still recording it. So we'll choose this as our input. Now let's see if we're getting input on this track. We'll switch our monitoring mode so we can hear it. Take these tracks out of record and put this track in record. So let's see if we're getting signal. We're hearing the drums, but the kick is in the left speaker and the snare is in the right speaker. We're only hearing two tracks. But if you look over here at our metering, we're actually seeing them all. Let's switch the layout to make it easier to see. Let's choose full meter. And now let's look at it. We can see all the tracks, but we're just hearing the kick out of the left speaker and the snare out of the right speaker. And that's because if we check our routing, we're hearing the master parent sent, which is output one and two. Let's turn this off. And now we should hear nothing, even though we're still getting signal over here. So now we need a way to send each channel to their own track. This way we could hear them and treat them separately. So let's send each channel to their own track. We'll drag from here to our kick. Make sure you're using pre-fader sends, not post-fader sends. In fact, by default, Reaper has it set up as post-fader. Just change it here in the preferences. This way they'll be pre-fader when we set them up. So let's send from here to here, drag and drop it. It's pre-fader, full volume. And let's choose what channel 
is sent. We'll change it right here to mono and just our first channel, which is our kick. So if we choose this, just the kick mic is going to go to this track. Now, the reason we're using these tracks is because they're already set up. They're already named. I have level on each. Check the mixer. They're already mixed how you want them. And I have effects on each one. So I already have my drum sound set up on these tracks. Now I just want to monitor the drums on those tracks. So right now we should hear the kick coming out of this track. And we are. So let's do the same thing for the other tracks. Drag this one to the snare, switch it to mono channel two. And now the snare should be coming out of this track. And it is. So let's do the rest. For snare bottom, if you remember, we use the ninth channel because it's mono. Then for the tom, we use three. For the floor tom, we used four. For the overheads, we're going to use stereo because the stereo pair going to one track. So we'll use five and six. And for the room mics, we'll do the same thing, except we're going to use seven and eight. So now our drums are coming in on this track, but they're being sent to these tracks. Let's hear it. Perfect. So now we're ready to record our drums onto just one track. Now we have one track with 10 channels, and our media item has 10 channels as well. Now let's record another take. Now we have two takes of our drums. Let's do one more pass. Now we have three takes of our drums. But because they're on one track, it'll be a lot easier to comp them. Let me show you. Let's zoom in. So now if we want to comp, this performance, we would split it by sections here, maybe here, here, and here. We could choose our takes just by clicking on them. Let's say we chose take one here, then take two, take three, back to take two, back to take one. We could hear it just like this. And if we're happy with that, and that's going to be our comp, just right-click it, go to Take, and choose Lock to Active Takes. Now it's locked, so we can't change our takes. And if we don't want to see them all, turn off the option Show All Takes and Lanes. Then it looks like this. We still see the take up here. Take one, take two, take three, take two, take one. Let's get rid of this piece. We can clean up our edits by zooming in and fixing them. Make sure it sounds good. And if we're happy with that, this could be a keeper drum performance. And we can keep it on its own track like this. Now, because we're editing in the arrangement window, we don't need to see these tracks. These are just for monitoring and mixing. So we can go to our track manager. Here's our tracks. Take these tracks out of the track control panel so they only show up in the mixer right here. So here's where we mix the drums, and here's where we edit them. But we don't need the drum track in the mixer. This fader doesn't do anything. If we turn it down, 
we still hear our drums. So we don't need this fader in the mixer. So if we go back to our track manager, we can take the drum track out of the mixer and it doesn't show up in the mixer anymore. So we have a tracks right here for mixing and we have one track for editing. And it'll work on any multi-track source, not just drums. A lot of times I'm doing piano and I'll put six or eight mics on the piano. This is a better way of doing it for comping takes. So this is multi-mic or multi-channel recording in Reaper. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Thanks.